Understanding fractions is critical for kids moving forward in math. It's the transition from uh, discrete, concrete math of counting how many, one, two, three, four, five, to understanding how much when I don't have discrete objects that I can count and I have to think about, well, how much is that? Um, that level of abstraction is a big step toward the rest of math and particularly going into algebra. And if kids don't get it, they can't go on. Understanding fractions is complex. Uh, typically, when kids uh, do number processing, they call on, in general, three cognitive processes. One is um, the name of the number. So when kids hear eight, well, that's a familiar. They know what eight is. They've counted eight. But when they hear eighths, well, what does that mean? That's a new kind of linguistic structure for them. And then they have to attach that language to come some kind of spatial representation, some kind of quantity. How much is eighths? Three eighths. How much is that? What does that look like? And then they have to understand what the symbolic representation of that is. Three eighths. I've got a three with a line and an eight underneath it. I haven't seen that before. So you have these spatial, linguistic, and symbolic representations that are kind of new for kids, and they have to connect them all together, and that's a lot of work. It's hard. One big thing that Fraction Nation does is it puts fractions in a one number system that includes both whole numbers and decimals as well. So we do that by building it all on a number line and all the numbers can exist together. And that's a, a huge thing for kids because most fraction instruction teaches whole numbers, maybe with a number line, teaches decimals, maybe with some uh, place value or 100 frame representation and teaches fractions with a pi or a circle. And kids do not see the relationship among those number forms. Fractionation puts them all together. That's a huge step. Technology can play several important roles in helping kids get fractions. One, it can help manage the cognitive load. Uh, whenever you're giving kids, any of us, new information, there's only so much we can process at a time. We have a limited capacity as humans in our working memory. So technology can help dole it out based on, in a sense, what students can take, what they can bear. So we can adapt dynamically to the pacing that our students can handle. If a kid needs more time, we can give more time. We step it out in nice small chunks, but if kids are ready to accelerate, we can move them forward more qu quickly. Uh, technology can also provide immediate feedback, corrective feedback. So if a kid's student is making a mistake, the technology can immediately correct that mistake, get them back on track, and make sure they're practicing what's correct rather than practicing something that's wrong, which is what can happen on a worksheet. Related to the feedback is that kids, we can give kids a sense of their progress. They can see themselves improving and getting it as they move f through the program. That kind of uh, transparent progress really helps motivate kids because it feels good. It, it, it progress gets you going. I want to come back. I want to see myself improving. And there isn't a delay to get the worksheet back. I can see it immediately on the computer. And then finally, or at least one other thing that technology can do, is to help represent fractions in multiple ways. So we can see it linguistically. We can hear it. We can see a, a number line and a fraction strip and set and circle representations of it. And we can see the symbolic representation as well and have the time to process and connect all those dynamically. That's, that's a lot.